That's all we're about it. I got my gamer subs. I also got something else. Kershaw Lucha. Yup. It's here. And I have one. Now, I really didn't want to make a review video about this. Not because I hate it. I actually love it. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I love it. But I didn't want to make a review video about it because there's already so many review videos about it that I kind of just want to talk about my perspective from it. Because there's already like so many overviews, reviews, you know, like Willard Hirsch did his, Cutlery Lover, all of them. I just want to talk about what I feel about, oh, excuse me, the Kershaw Lucha um, versus, say, other knives that I've flipped and that um, comparatively to others. Hmm. Also, get some gamer subs, it's good stuff. Okay, so initial thoughts when I first got it in the mail was like, I was like, oh my god, it came, you know, it's here, it's here. I'm gonna get a call, shit, call me a knife. But when I un unboxed it from the box, I was scared shitless to flip it. I mean, literally scared out of my mind. Because this thing, when it came in the mail, it came sharper than hell. Like, I literally, like, went to the bathroom, tested it out, and to fucking shave some hair off my face, I basically gave myself a shave. A full on barber quality shave with this thing. And I will, okay, I will admit though, I'm not gonna say this knife is sharp right now. It's not. It's, it's not as sharp as I would want it to be. But it's, it's decently sharp. It's not, but like, if I were to like say, you know, try to cut myself with it, it's fine. You know, it ain't, it's, it's essentially dull, but I can still use it in like a working space, right? And so flipping this thing was very hard to get used to since I was so used to flipping a lighter knife. I had to get used to the fact that this thing weighs or clocks in at five ounces. And five ounces might not seem heavy to like the normal Joe, but I, you gotta, you gotta understand, I come from flipping cheap, like stainless steel CCCs that were like with G10 handles, clones, um, that are titanium and aluminum clones, like, you know, in my past videos, say, um, the Cracker Acting clone and the Replicant clone. I come from that, so flipping this knife, it was definitely something to get used to, especially since Flipping this knife at first, it like, it gnarled my finger, like right here. Since I do a lot of tricks where I have to like, hit my um, blade of my knife against my finger and stuff like that. Like, and it just beat the hell out of my knife, and my, or beat the hell out of my hand, flipping it. But um, I've since gotten used to it over the week. And really, I'm not scared anymore to flip it, even if this was um, like ungodly sharp. And when I first got out of the box, it reminded me of a Benchmade 62. And I know that's gonna like confuse the absolute fuck out of some people because you're like, what? The 62? You can't compare the Kershaw Lucia to a 62? It's impossible. You just can't. You know, they're completely different knives. But what I'm talking about here is quality of like quality of assurance. When I say Quality of assurance, I mean, when I took this out of the box, I felt like I was holding a good knife. I felt like I was holding a knife I could take with me to the desert and it would not fail on me. I like held it in my hand, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I've officially upgraded right here. Even though technically I know I haven't because it's still a stainless steel knife and it's still in the budget range. Which, that's not bad, by the way. If this is all you can afford to have, that's great. 
this is this is a, this is not a bad thing to have this knife at all. This is a great EDC knife. I don't want to get I don't want to like horse shame anybody here because believe me, I came from that era too. Pull my sleeves up. But yeah, it, it's it's a great knife. It's for for the price you can't beat it, and that's what I'm trying to get at here. Um, in terms, of, but in terms of my opinion, I would okay if so if you were to put in front of me a replicant and a Kershaw Lucha, and you said what would you rather daily drive um, for let's say a week, I would literally tell you the Kershaw Lucha. I know some people would be like, but why? The, the replicant is lighter, it's better, and it's a better flipper. And why I agree with that, I don't agree with the fact that it's better because every knife is great in its own right, no matter um, which brand it comes from. And, oh, there you go. I landed that. And what I mean by great in its own right, I mean, the fact that I trust this to be durable and secure, like I could, I could fucking slam this damn thing on the ground if I'm angry or like, you know, if I'm like cutting something, I don't, you know, I can trust that it'll just go right through. And the fact that it has stainless steel handles and great hardware, by the way, like this, it looks kind of stripped on camera. Like it looks, kind of, I did strip it. But uh, I really didn't. It's still functional, it's still working. It, it's great hardware. And I'm pretty sure Kershaw sends you, you know, like three, oh shit. My collar and my jacket's breaking. It's still a work in progress. It's, yeah, there you go. But um, I'm pretty sure, Ker sorry, what was I saying? Okay, I'm pretty sure Kershaw Lucha can, um, send you some more hardware, but still, I, I would still trust my day-to-day -day activities with this knife than I would a replicant. And I'm not saying I'm hating on other companies. I really don't have um, a solid opinion when it comes to the quality of assurance of other companies, but for BRS, something like that, I do have an opinion on because I've actually flipped the bare bones before. Um, one of my friends is bare bones. And I've also got to try a replicant from one of my workplaces. One of my assistant managers had a replicant. Um, and while I say it was a great knife, shit, it still couldn't compare to the Lucha. Now there are downsides to this knife, I will say that. And it's the fact that the Lucha doesn't exactly have any texturing on the handles. They're just really smooth. And the only grip you get is with these um, skeletonized pattern handles and these indents. But that just, it, it does ruin the flipping experience. Like you see me dropping it a lot. Like normally if it'll stay with like a replicant, I can just keep flipping and not drop it. But it, this, ju this, just like a squid trainer, likes to slip out of your hand. And that's one of the um, major downsides of this because I do like a good grippy knife, like say with G10, but it's just, that's just one of few downsides compared to all the good things about this knife. It's a great EDC knife and I would trust it more than I would trust any other knife, but in terms of flipping, I would, I wouldn't say don't get this in terms of like, if you want a good flipper, but if you want a beater that you um, kind of care about, but you don't care if it like gets dropped on concrete or whatever, and um, you just, you basically just want a durable knife, I would say get this knife um, if you're on a budget. If you do, if you can't open up your budget a little bit to say like 200 to 300, I would really just say get something from a Tropos knife. They've got great stuff too. Mm. I saw someone online compare this to the um, Team Fortress 2 spy knife from a Tropos knife, um, that company. And while that is a somewhat fair comparison, I will admit that um, comparing it to the spy knife, um, 
that Chokos made, the spy replica. The only merit that holds is the fact that it has a similar build. And it, it is titanium, the spine knife does, yes, it is titanium, but the handles are smooth. They are titanium smooth handles, just like this, which are, these are stainless steel. But my point is, it would still be as slippery and also as heavy because the spy knife handles are pretty fucking thick and all things considered and I'm pretty wide. Like that's a that's a pretty fat ass if you ask me. But um I forgot about bleeding. But it's just I'm glad that this com the um Falcon community if anything has adopted this knife um with warm hearts and open arms. Um if I can even say that because when the bare bones first came out, and I'm gonna keep comparing it to the bare bones shamelessly. I don't care. That's, that's just what I'm gonna to do today. But when the bare bones first came out, nobody wanted to mod it. Nobody wanted to be like, oh hey, this is an opportunity to make a shitty knife better. Fix my check. I don't know if it's that in post. There's no way I can do this all in one thing, but no. There we go. Okay, action. But, when the, like, when, like I'm saying, when the bare bones first came out, nobody wanted to mod it. Turbo Jackalope um, was one of the few guys that um, I believe modded it. Um, it was either the bare bones V1 or V2. He gave it bushings. And he gave it basically with the um, Turbo Jackalope uh, Turbones package, you got a bushing system for the bare bones, which it didn't have any. It had a, just a plain washer system, along with um, some titanium channel handles, which that's great. For a knife like that, that just makes a knife, right? And I love that. But when it comes to Modability, I didn't see uh, mods, I didn't see very mods for the bare bones. Well, for the um, the Lucha, I saw a good bit of mods. Like, Fly Flytanium already came out with two sets of Flytanium uh, re-handles for this knife, along with, um, Along with uh, Patient Zero Balasong, which he was uh, working on his shit for a good good while actually when the Lucha came out in 2020. And it was only like a very few production run. Oh, the shack keeps disconnecting. Fuck. But yeah, the Patient Zero only had like a, like a I think a hundred handles done. 100 sets of handles done for the Lucha, but I digress. My point is that, modability wise, the Lucha has a lot going for it. Since this is like, kind of like a blank canvas for battle songs and battle song modding. So, there's just like a close up look of it. I mean, you've already seen it. I got mine custom engraved by Blade HQ. You know, you know say Johnny Silverhand, because I'm a big cyberpunk fan, if you can't already fucking tell that. And I really think that um, this is what Johnny Silverhand would have used back in the fourth corporate war, you know. And plus, it's silver, right? It has like that gunmetal or like satin silver look. So, you know, it kind of looks like his arm, right? His silver hand. I think that was pretty exciting. But anyways, I digress, again. My, my uh, main thoughts about this knife is that I love it. It's one of the few knives that I've bought ever in my life that I don't regret buying. Because I've had a good bit of knives in my lifetime that I'm just like, oh, why did I buy that? Why did I spend my money on that? I could have used that money for Taco Bell or like a new set of clothes, some food, you know? But this knife, I do not regret whatsoever buying. I love the shit out of this knife, and I really want to, if I get the opportunity, get some re-handles for it. This is just going to be my new, like, go-to flipper. 
And I, any day of the week, I'd buy this over a Bare Bones or a BRS product. So yeah, that's, that's the main idea behind the Lucha. Y'all going.